us for the month of Elul. Oh, there we go. And um, and we'll have some time uh, to go through some of the, the prayers in our mocks or the melodies that help us spiritually prepare for this new year uh, that we are about to enter. But we all have different ways of preparing. For me, music and hearing the melodies of Elul and Rosh Hashanah really bring me into the new year. For some, it's the sound of the shofar. For others, it's the cheshbon hanefesh, that accounting of the self and of the soul that we are meant to be doing during this month of repenting, of asking for forgiveness, of figuring out what it is that we want to change in the year to come. And in that theme of preparation for the new year, uh, we asked a few of our congregants what it is that they do to prepare for the new year, how it is um, that, that they get ready uh, with the hopes that, that what they share with us might inspire those of us who maybe haven't started or have felt a little bit stuck in our preparation um, or just to learn from, from others as to what that looks like uh, in this month preceding Rosh Hashanah and in their lives. Um, so we have Alex who will be joining us on Zoom. Uh, we also have Patrick and Alfredo and Mark who are going to share with us what that feels like, what that looks like to them. We're going to hear from our panelists and then go into our Havdalah service and our Slichot service. So if you would like to put your Maksor down, not on the floor, but, uh, but somewhere else for the moment, you are certainly welcome to, of course if it helps you to prepare for the High Holy Days by flipping through and looking at some of the prayers that are in there and the commentaries and the readings, you may keep it in hand and do that. Um, so Alex, I'm wondering if you would be willing to begin and everybody, if <laughs> you may- Sorry, everyone. yourselves Hello. so that you can look at Alex while she's speaking. Shuvah Tov. Um... I was afraid you'd call on me first. <laughs> um, so because I've been privileged to be a lay leader here at Baby Shpacha for a while, my, my high, part of my high holy day pre preparation can begin as early as May or June when service leaders start to get together um, and talk about what services we're gonna do, what themes we wanna explore, what kinds of issues have come up in the year previous, that we might want to hold as we do our preparation, um, and that sort of you know, primes the pumps, and 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 we get some wonderful learning from Rabbi Jake, and we get a chance to sort of you know ponder where we are and how we're doing, um, you know, and then we have those meetings, and then you know life comes, and sort of things get derailed because they do. Um, and especially this year because I got COVID twice in August, and so I didn't really start focusing. Um, a lot until until early September and and I was thinking about this and I and I thought that my preparation has really kind of changed over the years. I mean, I, I started. Um, I, I'm a huge reader. I like I process things when I read, and so, you know, and I'm also a huge nerd, and so I I look for I actively look for things to read and that I can sort of learn from and think about. Um, Scott Ryder many years ago introduced me to this book called This is Real and You're Completely Unprepared um, by Rabbi Alan Liu. And it's, um, it's there's an emotional and sort of mystical journey from Tisha B'Av through Sukkot. And I would recommend it, except I, I do recommend it. And it is not easy going. I've read it every year for three years and I still, I'm not sure I understand everything. So um, I've also worked, uh, I've also read and, and done the work with uh, Carrie Olitsky's Preparing Your Heart for the High Holy Days, which is a wonderful, you know, very nice guided journal. Um, but I think in the last few years, my preparation has kind of shifted. I'm, I'm moving away from trying to intellectualize Teshuva um, and trying to get more in touch with sort of heart things and soul things. And um, so I have a, a regular journaling practice and an irregular meditation practice. And starting around a month before um, Yom Tov, I, I start to add questions certainly into my 
journaling practice and and sometimes into my meditation practice that kind of kind of depends but but I just start asking my questions about you know how the last year has been and um you know how did I show up for others and how was my you know how much compassion did I show to the people in my life um you know how much compassion did I show to myself um and, and I try to think about, you know, what kind of relationship do I want to have with God? I mean, when I think about, when we all think about the High Holy Days, there's some liturgy in there that's, you know, Unutana Tokev is a little intense and a little scary and kind of intimidating and 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 also is not really kind of a God that I can relate to too much. Um, so I, I try to think about what do I think that God might want from me or that that a that an ethical and aligned life might look like and how can I make how can I take steps not fix it finish it not get there but what steps can I take to um to move through the world in a way that really honors you know that divine spark in all of us um and and these are really ginormous questions and they're not new questions um and that we ask them every year I think is good um but but i also i think the key thing that i have learned to do is to just make time to ask the questions and then make time to listen for any answer that may arise um and it, it's a noisy world it's a busy world especially for some of us now it's even busier um but and that and that answer can sometimes be small um, and it's not always a, you know, a lightning and thunder and, you know, drama moment. It's a, you know, it's a little thing. And, um, sometimes I just have to say, look, I'm going to do some journaling now. And I really want to sort of focus on high holiday kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a process of learning to sort of trust myself that there are answers, at least temporary ones or partial ones that I can sort of draw on, uh, to, as I go forth into the high holy days, um, it, it, you know, and try to do Teshuva, try to turn in ways that both sort of acknowledge and hold myself accountable for where I have fallen short, but also that I can grant myself some compassion. You know, if if I am not comfortable with a God who is very judgmental, then I should not be that judgmental to myself, um, which is probably one of the harder lessons um, that, that I'm continuing to learn. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I don't have a, a uh, you know, it, it, you know, I don't have a, a BuzzFeed headline of, you know, prepare for the high holidays and these five steps and number three will really amaze you. I, I don't have that. Um, I, I just have a process of trying to make some room um, and, uh, and give that time because it really does deserve time. And there have been years when I haven't been able to do it until Rosh Hashanah or sometimes until Slichot. I try to start a little earlier than that. I try to really get started about a month in advance, but I don't always get to do that. Um, so I'm taking the opportunity that we have being together tonight to, um, you know, to have those thoughts and ponderings kind of marinating on the back burner, if that's not too mixed a metaphor, Jeff, sorry. Um, so anyway, that's me. Thank you all. Shavua Tov. Thanks for kicking it off, Alex. And um, hopefully our High Holy Days will be a respite from clickbait. <laughs> so thank you for making it so, at least to, to start us off this evening. Uh, Mark, would you like to continue? And I should say, if anybody has any questions or if you would like to, if, any, if, it, if it pops into your head that you would like to add anything once we've heard from all of our panelists, uh, we'll have a chance to do that as well. You can come here. Uh, on the first page of the current edition of this congregation's newsletter is an article by Rabbi Jake describing a four-week preparation plan for the High Holy Days. The plan is thoughtful. It is replete with Jewish values. Many people likely have found it useful. I am not among them. I don't respond well to checklists unless they pertain to shopping or travel preparations. Nor do I find helpful other well-intentioned recommendations for High Holy Day preparations. Over the years, I've encountered entreaties to take a spiritual inventory or assess my relationship with God. But my spiritual inventory would likely come up empty. 
I approach religion from an intellectual rather than a spiritual context. Nor do I have or seek much of a personal relationship with God. I find the God of the Torah harsh and temperamental, someone you would rather not encounter in an elevator, and the much more benign God of our liturgy is unrealistic. Over time, I have perceived God as an aspirational standard. That's not relationship material. So what do I do? I keep two objectives in mind. The first is to complete the task. That's how I got through 19 years as a student and 41 years as a practicing attorney after that. I completed the required work on time. And for the most, most of the past 30 years, I've had tasks to accomplish for the high holidays other than showing up for services. For 10 of the past 13 years, I have delivered a sermon for Bet Mishpacha on the high holy days. Writing a sermon requires something more than sitting in front of a computer and hoping something intelligible emerges as my fingers meet the keyboard. It is not something that can start the day or week before. Instead, during the summer, I must ask several questions. What do I write about? How do I write something that fits within the themes of the liturgy and the service? How can I relate my thoughts in a way that others will listen? A confession. Addressing these questions requires me to think about several matters described, discussed in the rabbi's four-step checklist. <laughs> my second objective is to work within my capabilities. I'm entirely unsuited by training, background, or temperament to tell others how to rearrange themselves or society. So I don't try to do that. It would be lovely to have the ability to mesmerize people with binding rhetoric and a spellbinding presentation. I can't do that either, so I engage in the more modest objective of trying not to bore people. I try to be interesting, perhaps include, including cultural references most do not expect or even necessarily understand, and encourage incremental changes in for the better. I don't think I can repair the world, but perhaps I can keep people engaged for 10 minutes. And I justifiably approach my task with an attitude of modesty, which is a particularly appropriate demeanor for the high holy days. <laughs> so we've just heard from two people. No, no, no. It's from two people who are going to be leading in some way, right, on the bima for the high holy days. And uh, um, we also had asked Vinny, uh, who unfortunately has COVID, um, at, who is also a, a service leader, uh, and we're sending our, our prayers of healing to her. Um, but now we're going to hear from two people who won't be on the Bema. That's not to say you don't have things to do for the High Holy Days with Beit Mish. Um, but the preparations might be a little different uh, when you're not writing a sermon or, uh, or a service outline. Um, so Alfredo, I'm wondering if you would like to begin, or you can come together, yeah, please, and Patrick. Hi, everybody. Um, and so I am going to go first, and then Patrick, my spouse, will go after me. Um, so preparing for the High Holy Days is something relatively new to us. So, um, and the way that I prepare for High Holy Days, I sort of do it in two kinds of tracks. One, I call it a very practical track. And then the other one is, how do I prepare spiritually for it? And the practical track, first of all, is when are the high holy days? Have I marked them on the calendar? And have I freed up our schedules to make sure that we're here so that we can partake in the high holy days? Um, second is, um, I need to get tickets for the high holy days. So I need to find that link uh, somewhere in the newsletter on our webpage, and so I did find the link yesterday, and we are booked, so we are we are going to be here for that. So, um, so that's sort of the practical side of it, and more seriously in terms of spiritually, how do I prepare for it? Um, you know, I I like to take an accounting of like where I've been in the past year, what I've been doing, what did I like about it, what would I like to improve. Um, so that I can sort of prepare myself in that way to sort of come forward with an open heart. Um, and, um, 
and not that because I work at the government accountability office that I do in accounting, but I just like to, to be sort of reflective and to sort of think about uh, what, what I'd like to improve about myself and what I'm doing and what I can do more of perhaps. Um, so I'm gonna stop there and I will take Patrick's place. Can you just switch out? I feel like the student who didn't prepare well enough to do his book report. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm the least of all and the last appropriately here. Basically, I've been thinking about how we celebrated the high holy days in the past and going back and thinking about what did we do what did that mean? What was the ritual? And what did it feel like? And what headset should I be in because of that? If any of you have done good therapy and you go to a good therapist, a the therapist will say, well, you said this and you said that. So when you say that, that can't be true. Go back and check it again. And I'm sort of treating this period like that. I'm looking for some authenticity in my own approaching of the divine. Another thing I'm doing, because for me, uh, I'm sort of like a dry drunk. I have low self-esteem and high ego. Um, so in that headset, I'm trying to approach this period with humility. I'm trying to find that space where I can be authentic and vulnerable and open and think about trembling and think about awe uh, and think about where I've been and what that will mean for where we go. I'm also fortunate, the greatest gift that God ever gave me was this man. Uh, no, and I'm not, that's not an all, that's the truth. I would be in jail, a mental asylum, or I'd have a gun. Um, so he is the greatest gift. And one of the things that we've been doing together is we've been talking about the high holy days and what that means. Um, we were sitting in the park um, doing some reading and talking. And so in some ways, I have the spiritual gift of him uh, to help me approach this season. Thank you. I'm wondering if anybody had any questions for any of our panelists or anything to add about High Holy Day preparations that, that might be helpful for those in the room, those, those joining us on, on Zoom. I will say um, for myself, um, Patrick, you're, um, your acknowledgement of Alfredo got me thinking a little bit. And um, I'm lucky enough to have a spouse who is a rabbi um, and whose sermons I get to read before the High Holy Days. Uh, and so for me, that's, that's actually a way of preparing because I get to edit and question, uh, but also be inspired by, by her words and her thoughts and um, we get to talk with each other about the texts that we want to highlight or the, um, the feelings that we want to, to have on the Bhima. Um, and although I don't think she wants everybody here to be her editor, um, ahead of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, um, there are, of course, sermons from previous years from various people who, um, who might inspire you that, um, that you might search out and read, um, even on, on our Beitmish website of not just for myself, but other darshanin, darshanot uh, that we've had in the past, um, to read over those again and to remind yourselves of what those messages have been. Um, those are always accessible to us. Um, so I would encourage us to, to prepare by looking at what, what people have said who have thought pretty carefully about what these themes mean to them and what they think they might mean to, to others. Um, so thank you to all of our panelists for helping us think about our own preparations and for sharing um, the practical and, uh, and the spiritual, which it, it's not always an easy thing to, to share. Um, so thank you for doing that. Uh, we're going to begin our slichot service with our service for separating between Shabbat and the rest of the week with Havdalah. This is the 
This is a service that calls on us to use many of our senses. We have the light of the candles. We have the smell of the spices, the taste of the wine. We have our voices. And we might even feel the warmth of the flames as well. Or the hand of a friend on our shoulders, if, if you so desire. So I hope that you have a Maxor in hand. And one thing that makes this quite easy is that Slikhot begins on page one of our Maxor. Uh, and I'm wondering if our three panelists in the room might be willing to hold the, diff the three different elements of our Havdalah service. So if Mark, Alfredo, and Patrick, if you would be so kind as to come back up. As the sun slides from the sky, as the sparks of the day are tamped out, from the last we ignite the twisted candle that summons us to remember how to braid into the rough wool of our daily lives that silken skein of the bright and holy. That reminds us we are a quilted people who have picked up the dye of our surroundings as tall and short, as dark and light as the lands we have been blown to, eating strange and distant trees, that we are a varied people braided into one, the candle that reminds us we pray with many accents in many languages and ways, all are holy and burn with their own inner light as the strands of this wax flame together. Woman, man, whomever we love and live with, single or coupled, webbed in family or solitary, born a Jew or choosing, pious or searching, gay, straight, bisexual, transgender, we bring our thread to the pattern. We are stronger for the weaving of our strands. Page four. Ya la 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 Agafen, O re peri agafen. Yai lai ya la 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 la, yai lai ya la 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 la, ya la 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 la, ya la la la. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore mine v'sami Yai lai ya la 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 lai lai yai lai ya la 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 lai lai ya la 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 lai lai yai la 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 lai ya la lai Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech 
Bore me ore ha esh. Bore me ore ha esh. Yai lai yala la 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 Bruchat ya Eloheinu Ruach hachaim Hamavdila bein kodesh lechol Bein or lechoshech Bein Yisrael Shvi'i l'sheshet yame hamase Brucha at shechina Hamavdilah bein kodesh lechol We take a sip from our Kiddush cup, if you would like to, and then we We'll extinguish our candle into the wine. Ha mavdil bein kodesh, bein kodesh lechol, achatotenu imchol, zarenu vechaspenu yarbekachol, Ve'akochavim balayla Shavu atov, shavu atov Shavu atov, shavu atov Shavu atov, shavu atov Shavu atov, shavu atov A good week, a week of peace May gladness reign and joy increase a good week, a week of peace. May gladness reign and joy increase. Page six. Eliyahu Hanavi. Eliyahu Hatishbi. Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hagiladi. Bimhera ve amenu, Yavo elenu, Imoshi ben David, Imoshi ben David, Miriam ha nevia, Ozvazim rabe yada, Miriam tir koditanu, Lehagdil Zimrat Olam Miriam Tir Koditanu Letaken et Haolam Bimhera ve Amenu Itevi Enu El me ha Yeshua El me ha Yeshua Shavua Tov, thank you to our panelists. Alex, thank you for joining us. In a moment, we will usher in the High Holy Day season by changing the covers on our Sifre Torah, on our Torah scrolls from the beautiful rainbow to these lovely white covers that help us think about the, the newness that we want to bring to the new year, the blank slate that we hope to establish through our repentance, through our atonement, through our forgiveness. And another piece of newness that I'm really excited about are these two uh, new pieces of furniture for our bima and one that you don't see yet. Uh, that this is the first time we get to use uh, in a ritual way and uh, that we will, we will be able to use to welcome in our new year of 5,785. Uh, and we are 
just so, so pleased that we get to beautify our prayer space to engage in Hidur Mitzvah, the beautification of a mitzvah with these lovely pieces that match our Arona Kodesh, our, our holy ark. There are many examples of beautifying mitzvot in Jewish life. Just think about a mezuzah on a doorway. There is no requirement that it look nice. Right? All it has to do is protect the, th the scroll inside. But of course, we have them made of all sorts of different and lovely materials, wood and metal and glass, to make this very basic thing much more beautiful. Think about a kiddush cup. Right? It just holds the juice or the wine. It could be any cup. It could be one of those plastic cups in the back. But we tend to have one, a lovely ceramic one here or one of metal to, again, beautify this mitzvah. And so we get to do that with these pieces. Um, so we are thankful for all of those who made this happen. Um, and I especially want to thank the one who crafted these pieces. Thank you for being with us tonight. <laughs> and I know there are stories behind the pieces of wood and, and the pieces themselves, so we look forward to hearing those. Um, perhaps after the service, you can tell us a little bit about that. I'm going to ask for four volunteers to help me with our Torah covers. Um, two to hold our Torah scrolls, and then two to switch over from our rainbow covers to our white ones. Do we have any volunteers who would like to help out with that this evening? Jeff, please. Paula, come on up. Joe? One more. Please. We're going to open our arcs. I'll invite you all to rise as we do so. We return our Torahs to the Ark. Ha 
Adeshyameinu Kekedem Please be seated. We have prepared our prayer space. We have prepared our Torah scrolls. And now we continue preparing ourselves for this new year. Page nine. These are the closing moments of Elul, the Hebrew month of preparation. These are the final minutes of expectation, building toward the thunderous shofar blast of awakening. These are the moments of slichot. Slichot is forgiveness. It is the prerequisite for a new year, but what is forgiveness? How is it mastered? With whom is it shared? Forgiveness is the courage to let go. One does not need to pardon another. One lets go oneself, thus allowing pain received and sustained, hurt inflicted and imposed to settle, and the true self to rise. Page 10. Return again, return again, return to the home of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the home of your soul. Return to who you are, return to what you are, return to where you are, born and reborn again. Return again, return again, return to the home of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the home of your soul. I'm delighted to welcome our Beit Mish Choir, Takshi team. We're going to make our High Holy Day service is more beautiful. We're going to engage in that Hidor Mitzvah of beautifying the mitzvah with your voices. And thank you for, for being willing to do so. And thank you in advance for the beauty that you will bring to our High Holy Day services. Oh. 
Eternal God, what can we say in your presence? How can we account for our sins? We speak of repentance, and yet we are slow to change. But now we turn to you with the prayer that your love may abide with us always, turning our hearts to your ways, our feet to your paths. Hope is food and drink to us. Hope sustains us. And so we pray, do not turn us away empty-handed from your presence. And end our darkness with your purpose. Help us, O oh God, in this hour of turning and make real in our lives the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts. Va'ani tefilati lecha Adonai et ratzon, Elohim berov chastecha, aneni be'emet yishecha. May my prayer unto you, God, be acceptable now. Almighty God, in your great loving kindness, answer me with your unfailing help. Page 12, I invite you to rise as you are able. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vechanun, Erech Apaim, Verav Chesed Vehemet, Notzer Chesed Lealafim, Notze Avon Vachesha, Bechata Venake. Knowingly or not, the whole community of Israel and all who live among them have sinned. Let them be forgiven. As in your love you have been patient with this people from the time you led us out of Egypt to the present day, so in your great love may you forgive your people now. Vayomer Adonai Salach Varecha Vayomer Adonai Salach Dikid Varecha Vayomer Adonai Salach Dikid Varecha And God said, I have pardoned as you have asked. Sovereign God, whose throne is mercy, you guide the world with your steadfast love, forgiving the wrongdoing of your people. You pardon all who sin, are, you, you pardon all who sin, are generous with all who live, treating them with compassion. Page 14. Adonai, Adonai. El Rachum Vechanun, Erech Apaim, Verav Chesed Vehemet, Notzer Chesed Lealafim, Noseavon Vafesha, Bechata Venake. At the bottom of the page, let's read together. We pray with Moses, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and call us your own. My God and God of my parents and ancestors, may my prayers open my heart to you. I have been given the freedom to choose between right and wrong, and I have not always chosen wisely. Now, together with this community of Jews, I am about to ask forgiveness I have not done all the misdeeds which I am about to name, yet I come before you not only as an individual, but also as a cell in the body of my community, my people, and the holy human race. I am impacted in these acts, good or bad. We are all one, and together we take responsibility for all the misdeeds and wrongdoings of our community and people Together we support one another in acknowledging that each of us makes mistakes, each of us has flaws. Together we remind each other that forgiveness is always possible and redemption is never so far away that we cannot reach it. 
Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vechanun, Erech Apaim, Verav Chesed Vehemet, Notzer Chesed Lalafim, Nose Avon Vafesha, the bottom of page 16. I am afraid of things that cannot harm me, and I know it. I yearn for things get, that cannot help me, and I know it. What I fear is within me, and within me, too, is what I seek. Page 19. Hear our voice, O eternal presence. Show us your mercy and accept our prayers with compassion. Turn us to you, O God, and we shall return. Renew our days as you renewed the world after the flood. Hear our words, O God. Consider our reflections. May the words of our mouths and the thoughts of our minds please you, for you are our strength and help. We need your presence. We need the spirit of your holiness. We need you as we age. We need you as our physical strength lessens. Do not let us abandon you, eternal God. Do not let us be far from your spirit. Be a sign for us like the rainbow for Noah. May we reflect your light, that those who oppress us might see anew. We are open to your help, O God, as the answer to our prayers. Eloheinu velohedor tenu tavo lefanecha tfilatenu faal tit ala mitchinatenu shein anu azefanim ukshe oref lomar lefanecha Adonai Eloheinu velohedor tenu tzadikot anachnu velo chatanu aval anachnu chatanu our God and God of all generations, as our prayer comes before you, do not ignore our plea. We are not so shameless and stiff-necked that we would say to you, Eternal One, God of all ages, we are righteous and have not sinned. Rather, we confess we have gone astray, we have done wrong. I, 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 I I I I I Heavy nu, the here shanu, zad nu, hamas nu, tafal nu sheker, dai 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 dai, dai 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 dai, dai 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 dai. Yats nu ra kizav nu lats nu marad nu niats nu yai dai 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 yai dai 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 yai dai 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 Sararnu, avinu, pashanu, sararnu, kishinu oref, yai dai 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 dai, yai dai 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 dai, yai dai 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 dai. Rashanu, Shikhatnu, Tiavnu, Tainu, 
Tita nu yai dai 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 yai dai 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 yai dai 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 dai. If at any point your body is telling you that it's time to sit, you may certainly do that. We'll continue on page twenty-two, alternating between the Hebrew and the English. Asham knew, we sinned against others and against God, but God knew, we prayed people who trusted us. Gazal knew, we robbed others of their time, money, or friendship. Dibar knew Dofi, we found it easy to discuss other people's faults. Hevinu, we led others to sin by our example. Vahir Shanu, we deliberately encouraged others to do wrong. Zad knew, we were malicious. Hamas knew. We manipulated others for our own gain. Tafal knew Sheker. We chose to believe lies and not accept the truth. Ya'atz knew Ra. We gave advice of no value. Kizav knew. We lied to others and ourselves. Latz knew. We mocked others, making light of their concerns. Marad knew. We caused unnecessary strife. Niyatsnu, we dishonored God and ourselves. Sararnu, we lived as if we had no spiritual needs. Avinu, we did what we knew to be wrong to get what we want. Pashanu, we stood still while others needed our help. Sararnu, we oppressed others thinking we could do no such thing because we ourselves have been oppressed. Kishinu Oref, we saw our deeds hurt others, but did them again. Rashanu, we did evil things. Shikhatnu, we let our desires and our lusts rule our lives. Ti'avnu, we degraded ourselves. Ta'inu, we moved farther away from God. Titanu, we led others farther away from God. Page 24. For the sin we have committed against you under duress or by choice. For the sin we have committed against you consciously or unconsciously. And for the sin we have committed against you openly or secretly. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha behar hor halev, for the sin we have committed against you in our thoughts. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha bidibor pe, and for the sin we have committed against you with our words. Al chet shechatanu lefanecha virtusat reglaim lehar a, and for the sin we have committed against you through our deeds. Be'al kulam Elohas lichot Selach lanu mechalanu Kaper lanu Be'al kulam Elohas lichot Selach lanu mechalanu Selach lanu mechalanu Kaper lanu Together for all these sins, O God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. You may be seated. Page 27, tonight we have created a space for forgiveness of ourselves, for our shortcomings and misdeeds, and of others, if they have somehow hurt us. In this space, we can change and grow and take steps that bring us closer to ourselves and closer to God. In this space, our kavanah, our intention is clear and is accessible. 
we know what we must do. But when we leave here, that intention may be lost in the noise and pace of our daily lives. So let us now take a few moments to try to capture some of this kavana, so that it may help us through the next weeks until Yom Kippur and even after. You might consider the next few moments as an opportunity to write your own slichot prayer, your own prayer for support as you strive to change. Like the night guard who calls the hours to a sleeping town, our prayers remind ourselves that we are awake, alert, and ready to walk the path of tshuva. Only you can know what will bring you back to awareness. So feel free to pray your own prayer. Or you might think of it as creating a reminder like tzitzit, or a string around your finger or a post-it on the mirror that brings your mind back into focus. Changing habits and behaviors is a great challenge. Providing reminders for ourselves helps us return to our intention. Only you know what will bring you back. So feel free to create your own reminder. Take a few moments to contemplate those words and this task. On page 29, our psalm for the month of Elul. Achat shalti met Adonai otav hakesh. Achat shalti met Adonai O Tavakesh Shivti Bevet Adonai Kol Yemei Chayai Lachazot Benoam Benoam Adonai Ulevake Bechalo Lachazot benoam benoam Adonai Ulevake bechalo Beginning on page 32, we'll find Avinu Malkenu Imenu Shkinatenu. We're going to open the ark for this prayer. And if your legs and feet and back are up for it. I'll invite you to rise as the ark is opened, and I'll also invite our choir back up to the bima.
Avinu makenu, imenu shkinatenu. Avinu makenu, konenu vanenu, ki en banu masim. Ase imanu. Sedaka vachesed, asei manu sedaka vachesed, vehoshienu. Avinu makenu, shema koleinu. Avinu makenu, hear our voice. Avinu malkeinu, chatanu lefanecha. Avinu malkeinu, we have sinned against you. Avinu malkeinu, salach umachalachol avonotenu. Avinu malkeinu, forgive and pardon all our misdeeds. Avinu malkeinu, achazirenu bichu Return us to you in perfect repentance. Avinu malkeinu, kale kol tsar umastin mealenu. Avinu malkeinu, help us end all oppression. Avinu malkeinu, hatirenu lekayim cherutenu. Avinu malkeinu, Enable us to attain our liberation. Avinu malkeinu, kodvenu besefer slicha umechila. Avinu malkeinu, inscribe us in the book of forgiveness. Avinu malkeinu, imenu shkinateinu. Avinu malkeinu, Konenu vanenu, ki en vanu masim. Ase imanu, tzedaka vachesed. Ase imanu, tzedaka vachesed, vehoshienu. Imenu shechinatenu, pit i share shamayim li tefilatenu. Imenu shechinatenu, let the gates of heaven be open to our plea. Imenu shechinatenu, kali dever vechere verav mealenu. Imenu shechinatenu, help us in sickness, war, and famine. Imenu shechinatenu, Shilchi refuash le malachole ulchalot amech. 
Imenu shkina tenu, send a complete healing to all who are ill. Imenu shekhina tenu, azri nu lishmor al pele briyatech. Imenu shekhina tenu, help us safeguard your wondrous creation. Imenu shekhina tenu, chizkinu letaken et olamenu. Imenu shekhina tenu, Give us strength to repair our world. Imenu shechina tenu, chachi alenu shana tova. Imenu shechina tenu, let the new year be a good year for us. Imenu shechina tenu, kitvinu besefer chayim tovim. Imenu shechina tenu, inscribe us in the book of life. Avinu makenu, imenu shchinatenu. Avinu makenu, konenu vanenu, ki en vanu masim. Aseimanu. Sedaka vachesed, asei manu tzedaka vachesed, vehoshienu. Page 37, a song of rising. I'm in so deep, so I call to you. God, hear my voice, pay attention to the sound of my plea. If you counted only sins, who'd be left standing? Only your forgiveness can soothe my fear. I wait, my soul waits, I yearn to hear your reply. My soul waits for God even more than the night guard waits for the dawn. My people, open your hearts toward God, the source of gracious renewal. God will free us all from all our sins. Is there anyone in the congregation this evening who is in a period of mourning or observing a yard site? Please rise and share a name with us. My cousin went to college. I'm still in a period of mourning for my parents who have died of cancer. And anyone from Zoom, if you'd like to unmute and share a name, if you are in mourning. If it is your custom to rise along with the mourners, I invite you to do so as we turn to page 38 for Kadish Chateau. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba ve'alma divrach hirotei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayichon v'yomechon v'chayi d'chol beit Yisrael v'agalau v'izman kariv v'imru amen. Hei shemei rabba mevarach le'alam ulamei almaya yitbarach v'yishabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitrumam v'yitnase v'yitadar v'yitale v'yithalal shemei d'kudusha b'richu La Ela Ula Ela mi kol birchata ve shirata, tushmechata ve nechamata, da miran be alma vimru amen. Ye shlama rabba min shamaya, ve chaim alenu ve al kol Yisrael vimru amen. O se shalom bim romav, hu ya se shalom, alenu ve al kol Yisrael ve al kol yoshre tevel vimru amen. You may be seated. I'll invite our choir up once more to sing those words that we just recited, those last four lines at the bottom of page 38.
Thank you. I'd like to invite Paula with shofar in hand to our b man. If, if there are any other secret shofar blowers that <laughs> you'd like to let yourself be known now, we have a couple of extras here. Please rise. Somebody like to call. I got it. Shavarim Terua. Takia Shevarim Takia Takia Terua Takia Gdola to thank all who participated in, the, in this service. Um, I want to thank our panelists and Takshi team for adding beauty and depth to our Slichot service this evening. And I am looking forward to bringing in 5785 with you all. I'm going to invite you to return your mock sorim to